Okay, <laughs> now we can get started. So I hope everyone has the materials. And today we're going to be talking about custom fonts. So this is kind of the next installation in our level up your ggplot series, if you will. Um, and we're talking all about different ways to use fonts, either the ones that are kind of inbuilt on your system or using cool like Google fonts. And we'll also talk about how to change colors and change like the formatting in headers, um, well, like titles and access labels and so on. So some of this stuff is a little bit tricky and some of it is prone to problems, but we think there's at least several options that will work for everyone. So let's get started. <laughs> and we start with loading in a couple of packages that we'll be using tonight. So there's show text, an extra font, um, GG text, and then we'll be using the tidyverse. And the data we'll be playing with tonight, this is not super important, but we're taking the tidy Tuesday data on um, salaries based on gender and roles and so on. So we have that here, we've called it survey, and it just looks at like age ranges, what kind of job someone has, how much money they make, um, where they're located and so on. So we're just sorry. using this. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, Kyla. Could you zoom in a little bit, please? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, that much. Sorry, I always forget to do that. Is that better? That looks good to me. I'll see what the okay. chat says. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So yeah, this is the data that we'll be working on. If you're interested, we've put here the link to the Tidy Tuesday repo on that. But what we want to do, so we're just going to use that part of the data that is based in the United States, so people who responded in the United States and are being paid in US dollars. And then we've just tidied it up a little bit. There was kind of some non-ideal way of, of collecting um, gender information in some of the questionnaires. So we just took care of that with a little bit of wrangling. And then we've called it Survey US. So you can look at this if you want, but it's not super important to what we're doing. Basically, what we end up with is the same type of information, but only from the US participants so that it's a little bit more condensed and a little bit more uh, workable. OK, then we're going to just make a couple of graphs that we can use as like our background graphs to show um, some font information or some font techniques. So first, we made this box plot. You can see we're keeping only annual salaries under 100,000. Um, no, under a million, just to keep the outliers under control. But we have just made a little um, box plot that's resting on top of a violin plot that looks at the average salaries, annual salaries for um, people in the United States based on their gender, including the categories of man, woman, and non-binary. We've added some, some custom colors here. But basically, it's just a uh, graph that will allow us to play with fonts. And we've done another one. This one, we have uh, taken the average salary based on the amount of um, years of experience in your field and also based on gender. So you'll see up until this point here, that's kind of the wrangling part. And that just cleans up some of the messy labels and puts them in the right order, groups by gender and years of experience, and then takes the average salary. So we get like a little summary table, which will show us the mean salary based on those two factors. And then we've made a little line graph out of this with the same colors. Okay, so that's just what we're working with um, because we need something to show how the, how the fonts work. So first thing I wanna show you about the fonts is uh, how we work with them in the, in the ggplot theme call. So last month we did a workshop on theme and we talked about all the different elements that you can change within themes. So how you can change your axis lines, how you can change the backgrounds, um, these little grid markers. There's tons of stuff you can change with theme. So we have that. Those materials are also on our GitHub, and we have that also recorded. So you can look at that. But I want to go over just the parts that are important for working with text and fonts um, to, get, to get that refreshed for you and also show you just kind of an easy way to do more simple stuff with fonts. So in that workshop, we showed this image. This shows you all the different text items that are in a typical ggplot. And it shows you what they're called within the theme command. So for example, you have the plot tag, which is this little bit of text that can come at the top left. But you have the title, the subtitle, 
you have your axes titles, so the labels that are given to the axes, and then the axis uh, text or the axes text that is, yeah, like the numbers or the groups that are written on the actual ticks on the axis marks. You can put a little caption. Um, you can give, you can change the legend title and the legend text. So you'll see that we used a lot of these fields in our example so that you can, so that we can play with them. So like this would be the caption, the source. Um, yeah. So basically when you have a theme call, which you'll be adding onto your ggplot. So you'll have something like whatever your ggplot is called, and then you'll add this theme command on the end. And you can change all of these items individually. So there's one for text, which will just do all text. So every single, all of these options will all be changed at once. Um, and then you have like you've seen in the picture, like the title and the subtitle, the caption and the tag. And you can also specify the axes labels either by changing both of them at the same time, like here with axis title, or you can change them individually. So axis title.x or axis title.y. Okay, so those are all the areas that you can change within the theme call. And then to change those things, or in order to give a different um, setting for things like the title, you assign it to one of these element text calls. In element text, you can change a lot of things in here, but I'm just gonna focus on a couple, which are um, face, color, size, and family. And so, um, yeah, I'll show you them, I think each individually. So for example here, say we wanna take the, the survey that we made, sorry, the um, graph that we made above, and we can add to it a theme command, and we can change all text elements, and we can set them all equal to element text face equals bold. So face is for doing things like bold and italics. Um, or there's also, yeah, so bold and italics. So okay, let's run this. Then you can see, of course, now all of the text in this line graph is set to bold. So again, when you have your theme command on the end of your ggplot, you always give the location. So we could also have had here, like say we only want to change the plot title then we could change only the plot title or we could change um, the axes title and it would change those locations. And then by setting it equal to element text, we can change, like we can make it bold. So you can also try here to make everything italic or you can make everything both bold and italic. For example, like this. So that's just an easy way that you can change some of the text elements just with using your ggplot inbuilt stuff and theme. And then there's also the option to change the colors. So here we are changing the axis text, the text that's located on the axes to be purple. And again, we always set this equal to element text. And then we can set um, the purple argument in there. And then we get here the labels in purple. So I guess you get the idea. You can also use hex codes here. Um, that should work the same. Just make sure you like set them with the um, hashtag. So this is this is the only hex code I know off the top of my head, and it's for a very light gray. But but you can set that to any of the default R colors or um, any hex codes. And then you can also change the font. <laughs> so within this, you have very few options in the default uh, ggplot. There might be a few more, but the ones that consistently work are um, sans, serif, and mono. So sans is a type of font, I believe, that doesn't have like these little um, curls or like accents on the edges of the letters, whereas serif, is, so that's usually Arial. Then serif is something like Times New Roman. And a mono would be like a monospace font where each letter takes up the same amount. So most people that'll, that'll get like a courier new. But I'll show you those. So let's try changing here in our ggplot. We'll, we add the theme command and we set the plot title to element text where the family is serif. And you can see this is setting it to, yeah, it should be Times New Roman. Actually only in the title. And I think, that this also works if you call it times. Oh, no, wrong. <laughs> it only works if you call it Seraphim. 
And then the sans, I believe, is like the default, so you're not going to see much difference there. But mono looks a lot different. So let's change all the text to mono. And then you see this is the monospace font um, courier, courier new. So that allows you to change a few things. It's also really convenient for if you're like writing a manuscript where everything else is in like Arial or Times New Roman. So you can quickly set it without having to mess with any of the fonts. Maybe you, you want like a no nonsense look, but um, you don't want any fun fonts, but you want to change it really quickly, then you can set everything equal to Times New Roman, for example. And then did I forget one of these? Oh yeah, and then there's also the size argument. And the size argument just changes the size. So you can try a couple different numbers and see how that works. And you can add multiple things here. So for example, we could, um, Oops. We could change these to be dark blue and be in Times New Roman. So there's once you've opened one element text call, you can add multiple multiple arguments within that. Okay, so that was basically what you can do with the default ggplot options without changing much. Um, are there any questions on that? Uh, no, I don't see any questions right now. Okay, so I'm actually going to hand it over to Julia then now, and she's going to show us how to work with some slightly more fun fonts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Kyla. All right, you should be able to see my uh, studio. Okay. Okay. Um, Right, so we've kind of alluded to the fact that using custom fonts in R is not the easiest thing in the world. I feel like every tutorial you'll read or see on it will start by saying fonts are notoriously tricky. Um, so, you know, strap in uh, there. But I, I think we've found one way that works pretty reliably, as, at least as far as we could test it. And then there's a second way that's a bit more fiddly but we hope that we can, so we'll show you both ways, um, and we're sure that you can get one of them to work. <laughs> That's our promise to you. Right, so the two ways that I'm talking about is, one option is, so first I should probably say, um, the fonts that you use, so in um, in Word or whatever your text processing program is, um, these come as little files. And on my computer, and I'll show this in more detail later, I have them all collected in one folder. So here, Arial, and I can click on it um, and open it, and I'll see a preview of it. But each of these fonts is just its own little file, right? So I can click on some other one, and I'll see a preview of what that looks like in different sizes, and yeah. So that's what fonts really are, just these little files. Um, and what we can do, and that's the first way, is we can download font files and we'll discuss sources. So where can you get them from? We download them, we save them, and then we let R know where they are saved and kind of load them in. So R is aware of these little font files and then we can use them. So that's the way that seems to work pretty reliably. So fingers crossed, we'll get that to work. And the second way is, as you can see, I have this folder and everyone has on their computer a folder like this where all these font files files are installed. So that's when you're writing in Word or wherever else, I'm not sponsored, um, then you know you have this, the choice between all of these fonts. So these are kind of installed on your computer, these are available on your computer. And the second option is to make R uh, aware of all of these fonts that are already installed here and that are in this folder. So that's the second way and that's the way that is notoriously a bit tricky. So we'll go through it and we'll see how it goes. Um, Okay, so option A, which is not installing the font files, just downloading them. So where can we find these fonts? Um, and I have two options here. There are probably more, but there are the Google fonts that you might be familiar with. So you have the two links for those. You can scroll through and see which ones you like the look of. And then here's a website called um, Font Space where you can also just you know, have a look and they have really fancy looking fonts. And then for both of these, so it says personal use free, so that's important information or 100% free, so that's important to know if you're allowed to use this. Um, and then you can just download that, right? So you can just download these um, fonts and actually in our um, 
repository or if you follow the um, the WeTransfer link, we have two of these that are already downloaded, Bungie Regular and Fauna One. So you already have these. Um, and that's what we'll use just as examples. And you can see, so this is called Bungie minus regular TTF and Fauna One minus regular TTF, right? So these can have different endings. Uh, so TTF is one that usually works. Uh, I think OTF can also work. I've tried that and it worked for me. Okay, so we have these downloaded. And the important thing here is also, this is the markdown that I'm in. And they are saved in the same folder as my markdown in the same location, same folder, these two files. And now we'll let R know that we'd like to use them. And this is with the show text package. So you need to um, install it if you don't have it yet and then load it in as we've done in the beginning. Okay, so the function we need is called font add. So now we're going to tell R add one font. Um, and the first one is Bungie. So I've actually just copy pasted the entire file name to make sure I don't have any typos. And that includes this .ttf, right? So the file ending .ttf, you need that as well. And the first argument is actually what I'm going to call it in the plot. So in the theme call, what is my name for this font? So that's something you can choose. Um, so I've just picked Bungie, it's just a bit shorter, but still I know what it is. And then the same thing for Fauna, and this is called Fauna 1 minus regular TTF. So again, full name with the ending, and I'm just going to call it Fauna. Okay, I'm running these two commands, and you can see nothing really happens. It just runs, and that's it. You don't get any, yeah, any feedback. So that's when you've downloaded the font files. If you'd like to, to use Google Fonts, you can use a different command and it's even easier because you don't need to download it necessarily. Um, so you can use font add Google and then name here I've picked um, Pure one and that's the name how it is listed on Google fonts. So these names, right? So you would have to type it in exactly how it's listed here for that to work. And then the second argument family Again, that's the name we'll use in the theme. So that's kind of my name that I'm giving it and you can pick whatever you like here. So I'm running this and you can see that it takes a little while. Um, doesn't take super long, but it does take a little second. And this is basically, so this is again, without downloading. I don't have this downloaded. You can download Google Fonts, but you don't have to. You can just call it like that with font at Google. Okay. And after we've added some new fonts, really important, we need to run this command, show text auto. We need to run that. And without that, the fonts won't show up. So every time you add fonts like this, you need to run this. So if I added another font, I'd need to run it again, just to make sure that everything shows up. Okay. So now, just as before, we're using theme. So we're adding to our box plot using theme, I would like text, so all text elements that I can change, I would like them to be Fauna. And then the title I would like to be Bungie, and let's see if this works. Yes. All right, so you can see all the text elements have been changed to this Fauna font, but the title is this Bungie font. Okay, so again, it's just in theme. And then text is just for all text elements, and then family is what we need to use for font and then plot title. I'm doing that separately because I would like it to use the other font. And I'm using these kind of shorter names that I've given them instead of the long file name, All right? So I'm using these shorter names. And again, you can, you can use anything you like here. You could also call it title font and then you know you want to use it for the title or whatever. Okay. And then just to, to test that it works for this one that we've downloaded, we, well, that we haven't downloaded, that we just used this font add Google command for. Let's see if that also works. So I'm just trying to change the title here and you can see that that worked. It just changed the title to this Pore font. Okay, so I think we should, um, we'll pause the video in a second um, and I'll give you a second to ask any questions and to try it for yourself. So again, you can either download a font you like from, you can download a Google font or you can use font space or whatever other 
sites that might be um, downloaded in the same location as this um, file that we're working with and then try to load it in. Um, or you can also use add font Google. So find one of the Google fonts that you like and then try and see if you can add it um, to a plot. And we'll just pause the video and be here if you have any questions or problems. And again, yes, this should work with the TTF font files, but also OTF. Okay, so something that we need to do, and it's pretty annoying that we have to do this, but here we are. Um, actually, just like half an hour before the workshop started, I realized that there's, there was a problem with how the two packages that we're using interact. So you can see we're loading in show text. So that's what we needed for um, the first option that you've all just tried, so that's show text. And then extra font is the package that I'm choosing to go with for the second option. So this is the package that is going to, or that's able to um, show our, look, here are all these fonts. Can you please load them in and let us use them in plots? So that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to tell R, this is where the fonts are saved and R is going to load them all in and allow us to use them in plots. That's the goal. Um, but the problem is that if you have show text loaded and then extra font also loaded, something seems to happen that makes these packages, they really don't like each other. If both of them are loaded, it might not work. So extra font might not work. So my solution for this uh, is to just close um, our studio. I've played around with detaching the package, which is the code that you can see in there. So kind of um, making sure that the package is not loaded anymore. It doesn't work reliably though. So just to make sure that we have kind of a clean slate to work with, I'm going, I've closed our studio, I've opened it again. I think you should be able to see it again. And I'm just going to run very carefully, not running show text, not show text, but extra font, and then everything else afterwards, just to make sure that show text is not loaded um, and that it won't cause any problems because that seems to, yeah, just cause a lot of issues with extra font. So I'm just running everything again. And I would recommend that um, you either try extra font later because it, because it does actually take a lot of time to set up. Um, or that if you want to give it a go, that you make sure that your R is clean. So closing it, opening it again is the best bet here. Okay, so now, okay, so this is the code that I tried that I'm not sure if it really worked. If you want to make sure I would close our studio, open it again, and now we're ready to go. So this is extra font. And the first thing you do here is importing the fonts. So this is loading all of these fonts that are installed is loading them into R. And if I press that, you can see it jumps to the console down here. And it's asking me if I want to import fonts. So it says, may take a few minutes. Um, and you can either type Y and then I hit enter for it to start importing. I, or I've already done that, so I'm going to type N. So don't import it again. So that's the first step. Um, the first time you use extra font, you need to do that. And every time afterwards, when you've installed a new font, you also need to do it again, just to make sure that all the fonts are there. Um, and then every time you start a new R session, every time you want to use fonts, you just run load fonts. And for me, because it's Windows, I'm going to add this part. So load fonts, and you can see, just hide this. I get this long list of fonts that are registered. Okay, so these are just all the fonts that are available. I can also say just fonts and that's going to list them for me. All right, and then fingers crossed. Okay, great. So now I can use them just as before. So you can see here my fonts list. One of them uh, is Calibri, Calibri, that's kind of a standard font, but I could also just copy paste something else and that should also work. Yeah, here we go. And just as before, so we're using theme, text, and then I'm just going with all, all text elements here and I'm just changing the family and that's the font. And you can see that it changed it. Okay. Yeah, are there questions? 
No questions. And I restarted my R, as you said, and it worked for me. So Yuli and I were trying this all afternoon and I couldn't get it to work on mine. <laughs> and it worked. So I don't see any questions in the chat. Nice. Yeah, I would really recommend just restarting your R and not um, loading show text because it really seems like these two packages don't, there's some kind of a conflict apparently. Um, and it's really hard to figure that out because it doesn't give you an error message at any point. It just doesn't work. It just says it can't find the font. And I think it must be that these packages are clashing. Um, yeah, and extra font is one package that you can try. There's also system fonts, I think, and I've heard good things about it. It did not work for me, um, but that's also something you could give a go. So this method of loading fonts is a bit of a yeah trial process of trial and error. Unfortunately, this can be a little bit tricky to do. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you can you can get there in the end. And I'm really glad that the the first option worked. And that's already you have a lot. I mean, there are lots of Google fonts, so you already have a lot of fonts at your fingertips. OK, so if there are no questions at this point, I, I think I'll move on to the last um, topic that we'll have for today. So um, I have a oh, question. Sorry. Yeah, um, no, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so the last topic today is we're working with ggtext a little bit. So ggtext um, is another package that you need to have installed and loaded in. And my cat wants to join. All right, because you can, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah. Um, so ggtext is, is a really, really cool package. So what it can do is, so far we've seen that um, in default or in default ggplot, we can make the entire, say, entire title bold, or we can make the entire title red or italics and so on. But we can't, by default, in default ggplot, we can't make only specific words bold or italic or um, color, color them in, right? So we can only do the entire title or the entire subtitle or the entire axis text or whatever, but we can't do it specifically for just some words. Um, and that has come up a couple of times in our past workshops and we'll, we're finally showing you how to do it. So this is ggtext. Um, what we'd like to do here, so for, for one of our plots, we would like the title to be average annual salary, um, but we would like average to be in italics, annual to be just normal, and then salary to be in bold. So this is kind of markdown formatting because in a markdown document, you can also use just one asterisk for italics and two for bold. So I'm just yeah, adding one asterisk each um, around average and then two around salary. So that's one thing. So we need to do that in the title or works the same for the subtitle. I'll show you in a second um, or any other text element. And then in the theme, we need to say plot title because it's the title that we've changed is element markdown so not element text but element markdown we're leaving the brackets empty for now okay and you can see that it worked okay so average is in italics annual is just normal and salary is bold and i'll show you what happens if you forget this part so i'm just running this part and then you just get the asterisks so you need this second uh, part in theme. You need to say, okay, plot title is now element markdown. And that's the function that you get in this GG text package. Okay. So here I'm doing the same thing. Um, so with the title, same thing. Uh, subtitle I'm also changing. So I would like this US respondents only to be in italics. And here I just want to show, okay, we have plot title is element markdown, and then I'm just using a comma, dropping that down a line to say plot subtitle is also element markdown. And here in element markdown, I can do everything that I would also be able to do in element text. So size and color, for example. All right, so you can see here. We have uh, a subtitle where US respondents only is in italics because we've added these asterisks, asterisks, not sure what the plural is, um, but also it's red and in a bigger font size because of this additional argument. Okay, so that's a really useful thing, but then even 
nicer is to be able to color code specific words and we'll use that we'll show a simple example first and then we'll move on to a bit more of a longer example and very often what you can do is you can color code words in the title or subtitle and replace the legend with that and that just makes it look a little bit cleaner and neater i think okay so our goal here is we only want to color code um one or two or three words instead of the entire title or entire subtitle just like here we've only had a few words that were bold or italics and now it's about color this is a little more complicated because we need css so css formatting is also what websites use to make to use color um, and font and font sizes and so on and this is um, the syntax is a little bit annoying i would recommend copy pasting it um, Okay, so <laughs> as our first example, we'll just we want to color code the US respondents only part. We would like to have that be in red. So um, I'm typing in the subtitle. So first, everything's normal. This N21000 part is normal. And then this is the template that you use for CSS. So you open um, these brackets and you type span style equals. And then you're adding a couple of arguments or you can add a couple of arguments here we're just going with color so you can see that it's i'm opening a single quotation mark typing in color and here careful it's it only seems to work with an o not o u i think at least i got an error last time i tried that and then a colon and then this is where my color goes then um another single quotation mark and then this is the text that you would like to be in in that color and then you have to kind of close it so span with a forward slash in these um what are these called like bigger and smaller signs so this is the template this is what it looks like in actual code so the text i would like to be read is uh us respondents only in brackets so this part and then it's kind of framed by this span style color colon red and then i have to kind of close this argument out and again i need to add uh element markdown in theme so plot subtitle because we're changing the subtitle is element markdown and now it's red all right um and if we actually want to use a hex code uh that works the same way so color and we sh we've just typed in a hex code works exactly the same okay now we have it as kind of a dark blue color all right is that clear so far this is a little bit of a complicated looking code but i would actually just copy and paste it so you don't have any typos in it because it's important that it looks exactly like exactly like this or it won't work but are there any questions on this? Just a, just a quick uh, question. I don't know if you know or not, but this forward slash here, uh, does that indicate that it's the end of the yes. coding sentence? Yeah. yeah, this is the, yeah, this is the end. So you, and we'll see that we'll see an example in just a second where we have so our goal is going to be that we have a subtitle that says um average annual salary of men women and non-binary people and then men will be red women will be yellow so the same colors that we have in the plot non-binary people orange and um, so that we can get rid of the legend and they will actually need this closing yeah closing argument um to say okay but men should be red but then women should, should be something else. So we need to close this. And I think actually, if I take it out here, it also wouldn't work. But, mm -hmm. but you're, I think of it as kind of wrapping the text, yeah, the text that should be colored. About, yeah, this is a HTML syntax, uh, like the typical HTML syntax, yeah. how it works in the web dev side. I yes. think you're actually missing an angled bracket after the single quote there by color. It's missing the end um, yeah. angled bracket. It's correct in the code, but it's incorrect in the text. Oh, oh, this one. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like a red. So after this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need this one. Yeah. 
good eye. <laughs> yeah, that's why I usually take code that works. So I go to a plot that I know has this kind of uh, code and I just copy paste it and I just adjust it as I need it because I know I'll, I'll have typos in it and it's really fiddly. Um, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the uh, more a little bit more complex um, example where I would like to explain in the title using colors what the colors in the plot mean so that I can remove the legend. So here I've just added line breaks to make it a little bit clearer but they're optional. So here I'm changing the title to say average annual salary and this is um, yeah I'm changing the title to say average annual salary for and then I have men, women, non-binary people and I have the corresponding hex codes for the colors that I've used in the plots. So here, yeah, you can see I have to say span style, I have to list the color, then men is the actual text that I want to color code, and then I need to close it. Oops, don't want to move it. And then I need to close it with this, yeah, span with a slash. Then I'm typing in a comma, so the comma will show up as just normal, not color coded text. And then I'm doing the same thing again. So my text is women, this is my uh, hex code and then I'm typing in and 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 will also just show up as black text because that's our default and then I'm doing the same with non-binary people with that correct color and again I need to say plot title is element markdown and I'm just removing the legend because we don't need it in this case because we've explained in the title what the colors mm -hmm. mean yeah so that's a really nice, I feel like it's a very nice trick because without a legend, it just instantly looks fancier <laughs> somehow. Uh, I guess I wouldn't recommend this if you have a ton of different categories, maybe that would get a little bit messy, but here I think it's pretty readable. Okay, so, so far we've worked with color, but what you can actually do is, so after color, you can add a semicolon and then add more um, kind of style elements. So you can do font family um, and font size are the ones that I, I know of, there might be more. And you just need to add a semicolon to separate these. So font minus family and then colon, you would have to type in whatever font you want. And then size is just the text size. So here, this is going to look a little bit awful, but it's just for the sake of the example, the colors are the same. But for men, I'm adding the font family bungee argument. Um, for women, I'm making the font size bigger. All right. Just to show you that you can add, um, you can add these elements on top, right? You can see that the font has been changed for men and that women is bigger because I increased the font size. So again, you, we're just listing these, we're just listing these and separating them with a semicolon. Um, and we can do color, font family, font size. Um, tell me again, uh, the font size for the, the is this the, uh, for average annual salary, is that a default size of a font? Yeah, that's the, that, I haven't changed that at all. So that's the default. It's just that um, women is now bigger. And we've yeah. done that with this font size 24 point. And default is 12. Oh, or, I'm not sure yeah. what the default is. Maybe, yeah. yeah, I'd have to look it up. But yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really like using this, uh, this feature. Okay. Um, and one more thing I wanted to show was that you can just add line breaks like this. So this is just the symbol for a line break. So now we have a line break here. That's all that's that I've changed compared to the previous code. So that's just this symbol, yeah, this combination. Um, and even within all of this, you can still use these aster asterisks um, to, to indicate that you would like something to be in italics or bold. So here I've added two asterisks around non-binary people to make that bold. And you can see that that worked. Okay. Yeah, and what we can still change um, 
so we can still we can still set kind of the default font for everything else uh, in text in theme and then just kind of overwrite um, specific words in here so here we're trying to use we'll just use family serif just to make sure that it's this is a default inbuilt font just to make sure that it works um, and then we can still change the font for single words okay as right, you can see the font has changed in all of these but we can still overwrite what's happening in the title with men being a different font Okay, um, any questions on this? Yeah, there's the question mm -hmm. of why you use um, BR and not like a backslash N to make a new line. Mm -hmm. Cause it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I had I a feeling that, mm -hmm, yeah. I had a feeling that it wouldn't work. You're right that if you have a, if you have a normal title, I think backslash n works. Oh god! Yeah, I'm thinking that it. when you um, add the when you set it as element markdown, I'm guessing then by default it reads that as CSS, and so you have to use a CSS tag, and, and BR is yes. the CSS tag for a line break. So yes. yeah, but um, no, it's a good it's a good question. So I've just tried it. Yeah, I've just tried it with just normal text so not element markdown but just normal text and here you can do backslash n and that will give you a line break um but yes if you're using element markdown you need this br thingy for a line break yeah any other questions all right so last topic um cross your fingers that my r won't crash because this made my r crash last time i tried it but gg text also has text boxes that you can draw around your title um so i'll just have a simple example i won't i won't add a new title i'll just add a text box so this is in theme um so for the for the title we would like the title to be changed to element text box simple um and then we have a couple of arguments in here. I'll just quickly run it and then go through the options. Okay, so you can see the title that I haven't changed now. This is just the title we set in the beginning. Has this gray box, a little hard to see, but there's a, I'll just quickly change it so you can see it a little bit better. Um, okay, so it's in a box with a gray, light gray background with a black line surrounding it. Um, it's this spongy font that we've keep, we keep using and it's red and there's a little bit of space around um, the text, right? So the line, yeah, the line of the text box doesn't start really close to the text, but there's a little bit of padding. So here are the options. Um, you have size and that's just the font size. Um, face, which we've been using, so bold or italic. Um, family, which is the font. And then you can change the color. So I've used red clearly. Um, and then a couple more text box uh, specific commands would be the line type. Um, so this is just that we can see um, this border around the text. So by default, it's turned off. Then we have box color black. So this is the color of the border around here. You can see I've turned to black. Mm fill is gray i've just set it to gray so that's just this little background fill in the box uh, for both you can use hex codes if you like i'm just using inbuilt colors for convenience and then we have padding so padding is a margin um, element so that just will add a little bit of space around the text so before the box the line of the box starts we want a little bit of padding a little bit of space around the text um, and then margin is actually the space around the text box. So you can see that there's a little bit of space between um, the text box and the subtitle, and also a little bit of space here at the top. Um, so that, and that's just what this margin element does. Okay, so these are text boxes. And then we can also combine like everything we've done so far. So um, all of these words in the title, we can put that in a text box. There we go. So now we have um, 
yeah, our title with color coded uh, words to explain what the colors mean. And we've just put it in a text box. So we can combine that. Okay. Yeah, questions on this? Maybe you can just say again what the positions are in the margin um, call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the, so these, I guess, so these numbers in, in the margin. Um, so this is top, right, um, bottom, and left, right? So uh, I think here, maybe we can see it well. So for this margin, I have 10 at the top um, and 10 at the bottom. And you can see that because here's white space above the text box at the top. And then here's also some white space around or between the titles or underneath the title. Um, and I can maybe just, yeah, increase that. So now I've increased the space at the bottom of the text box to 20. So now you can see there's more space here. So it just kind of adds a little bit of white space in between these elements. And that could just make it look a little bit nicer. Yeah, any other questions? Great. Um, yeah, then I think, I mean, Kyla, I don't know if you have time, but I think I'll stick around for a few more minutes in case people want to try anything um, and would like some help. But thank you very much for joining. Um, I hope you had some fun with um, fonts and I hope you'll give them a go on your own. And I wish you um, a frustration-less experience uh, <laughs> with fonts. <laughs>